It is low tide in Texas. Seth Small, Texas A&M kicker, sneaks one inside the left upright as time expires. Texas A&M taking down the top-ranked Crimson Tide 41-38 to in absolutely dramatic fashion. The Aggies held a 14-point lead at the half. Bama came all the way back to take the lead, but A&M did not flinch, clinching this on a last-second field goal as Nick Saban suffers his first ever loss to a former assistant coach. Leading the way for AM was quarterback Zach Calzada, who was 21 of 31 for 285. Uh, but what he brought to the table cannot be captured by a box score. The young man took a shot on the knees on the game tying touchdown pass. Didn't look like he'd be able to continue, but he came out of the tent, let his team down the field, set them up for that field goal to take down number one, Alabama. Joining me now in studio, CBS Sports football analyst Bryant McFadden, the two-time Super Bowl champ, here to break this down. BMAC, wow. Wow, exactly. Where to begin here? An outstanding game played by AM. They take the lead into half. Then they come out maybe a little bit. They let off the gas, allowing Alabama to come back into this ball game. Uh, both uh, teams scoring here, defensive touchdowns, third-phase touchdowns. But when it's all said and done, Zach Calzada leads his team down the field to set up that game-winning field goal. Your initial reaction is what? Wow, wow. Zach had the game of his life. Mm. I mean, he's been a bit up and down, inconsistent. Uh, offensively, they've been inconsistent. Offensive line-wise, they they were having issues in protecting their young quarterback. They couldn't protect the quarterback. They couldn't run block well uh, for Spiller. But all of those issues came to life tonight in the most important ball game for A&M. They were on a two-game losing skid. Mm -hmm. Clearly, losing one more ball game. Any playoff implications, any uh, 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 conference championship implications co to compete for an SEC ch championship would go down the drain. They did the unthinkable, an 18-point underdog, 18-and-a-half-point mm -hmm. underdog, something like that. I didn't think they had a shot, <laughs> but the way they came out, the game plan was spectacular. They executed the game plan, and the young quarterback, Zach Calzada, played an unbelievable game. He outperformed Bryce Young, and I felt like that was needed for them to have a shot in winning this ball game. You know, you take down Alabama uh, there at Kyle Field. You know you got a lifetime ticket. You saw Johnny Football on the sideline, last quarterback to take care of the Tide. Now it's Calzada etching his name in history as they take down Alabama 41-38 to on a last-second field goal. So much history, so many records fall, 100 straight wins against ranked teams broken. 19-game win streak comes to an end. Nick Saban suffering his first loss against an assistant, previously 24-0. At the center of it all, we say hello to CBS Sports' Jamie Erdahl. Uh, Jamie weathering the storm there at field level throughout this one. The home of the 12th man was rocking as it continues to be. First year starter here, Bryce Young pressured throughout the night. Calzada gets the headline. Give us an idea of how that raucous crowd and atmosphere dictated the flow and outcome of this ball game. Well, credit to Bryce Young. Let's start there. He had to go to Florida at the beginning of this season and deal with that crowd and win. Then he comes here. It's not any easier. In fact, I think this game was louder than it was in Gainesville. But he hung. He did his best. But man, did Texas A&M's defense bring it tonight. And credit to Zach Calzada. Like Gary said at the end of our game, he had the world critiquing his every move as he stepped in for Haynes King. But what did he do? He took care of business the way he, the reason why he came to Texas A&M &M was to be a quarterback and to win games like this, to take a shot down the stretch and come back in and take care of his job. I mean, this was, this is an unbelievable roller coaster to witness tonight. Uh, storybook stuff as that story continues to play out in front of our eyes here. Uh, the playoff picture essentially thrown into a blender over the last few weeks. Uh, this, the latest exploit. Uh, first ever loss here to an assistant coach for head coach Nick Saban. Jimbo Fisher now left to don that feather in his cap, Jamie. You spoke to Jimbo moments ago. What does this moment mean to him? He was emotional. He was very emotional. He had a lot of people coming up to him. He, I mean, we felt like we were in a fishbowl like we do right now. But he was taking the entire scene in. He seemed happy. He seemed relieved. And when I asked him, you know, this co coach, the program has been through it in the time that he's been through. And he's a part of that. You know, he's been a part of those high expectations. And this team has lost to start the season. 
but this is a program defining win when it comes to getting recruits to come to Texas A&M, to reestablishing yourself within the division, and to really erase that narrative that no one can beat Nick Saban, especially if you work for him. Well, now his name will go down in the record books. That's Jamie Erdahl standing in the pocket with the best of them. Jamie, fantastic stuff as always. Thank you. The pocket is collapsing on me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, dealing with some of that pressure that uh, Bryce Young dealt with throughout the night, A&M pressuring the quarterback, leading to something that we have not seen before. Nick Saban losing to a former assistant, uh, Jimbo Fisher, now getting that uh, lone tally in that uh, category. He was previously 0-4 against uh, old St. Nick, but uh, it is a long list of assistants that come out of that Saban coaching tree. None of them have been able to crack the code or find the secret sauce Jimbo Fisher does on Saturday night. Back in studio with the best in the business, Bryant McFadden here to break this one down. BMAC, we see the scene continuing to out unfold there out at Kyle Field and just some really spectacular stuff. We mm -hmm. talked about the quarterback play here out of AM, but take me back to the game plan. Yeah. Just when you have to take down a team like Alabama, number one against unranked, it goes without saying, 100 straight wins for Alabama. What do you have to do within the execution to see a result like we did tonight? You got to get some lucky breaks. You know, it's not just about executing against a team like Alabama, who's so well coached. They're disciplined. They play with the proper technique and fundamentals. You got to get some breaks. And we saw that uh, for A&M, you know, some costly turnovers on a third or fourth down opportunity. We saw the fumble uh, from Bryce Young to Brian Robinson recovered by A&M. Later in the ball game in the first half, we saw a red zone Turnover by Alabama. They had an opportunity to put points on the scoreboard. Worst case scenario, three points. They get nothing. That was huge. That was huge for the confidence uh, for A&M on the defensive side. And that did something to the team, the, the morale of the team. So they were able to get some bounces to bounce in their favor. Mm -hmm. And they took advantage of those, of those opportunities. And like I said, the player of the game has to be Zach Calzada. Mm -hmm. The game he was able to perform put on display on a national stage was something they needed they needed every throw every positive yards I mean every smart decision and also got injured was able to come back into the thick of things in the most important situation of the ball game and he delivered hats off to the young fella yeah there you see him uh, delivering that ball to tie this game up and back against the wall this is them playing from behind in the final moments or in the waning minutes of this game, BMAC. It's one thing to take that 14-point lead into the half. That lead does not hold. Bryce Young brings his team back into this one, but the resolve of a and there has to be a certain level of belief to pull off what they pulled off. Tonight. And also, too, another key, a few key situations in the ballgame in the second half. Remember, Alabama drove down into the red area. Two times they had to settle for field goals. Mm -hmm. That was huge. That was the difference, in my opinion, in winning this ball game for A&M. Because if Alabama scored touchdowns, this game would have been over. But their, their, their defense buckled down. They play what I, what I call elbow defense. The elbow bends, but it don't break. And that's what they were able to display in the second half. And field goals are very, very important. If you can force teams to settle for field goals, no question you have an opportunity to win those ball games. And they were able to do that defensively for A&M. That led to a huge monumental signature like win for Jimbo. Yeah, you speak about the importance of three rather than six, especially at the college level where points are a plenty. That really was the difference in this ball game, BMAC. Yep. Uh, it was a great moment for all of those home fans experiencing it all. But these two teams have to move forward. A&M, this is obviously a perennial win, uh, just in, not in just in this year, but for the entire program. But moving forward. Alabama is not to be tossed aside. They're not to be thrown out. They could still be the best team in the country when it's all said and done. How do they move forward? How does Coach Saban use this as a learning experience for his team? Well, get back to playing smart football. Turnovers. They had more turnovers, tur turnovers than A&M tonight. They also had more penalties. That's not Nick Saban like football on either side of the ball. So being able to understand and know the situation, but play smart, sound football, clean football, that has to be the key. That's why uh, Alabama, they're always in the championship conversation because they're always the smartest team. They're always the most, uh, the well coached team based on the teams that are on the football field any given Saturday. So me personally, just get back to doing what they've been doing. Turnovers hurt them. The discipline issues hurt them tonight, especially the red zone woes as well. I'm going to put you on the spot here, B-Mac. Yep. 
where does Alabama now situate themselves with this loss on their resume? You obviously have a Georgia team made another statement on Saturday. The defense uh, looks formidable, to say the absolute least. Is Alabama 1A? Is Alabama 2? Did no, Alabama, Georgia's 1. Did Alabama slide even further down than number 2 after what you I mean, saw Iowa did against number 4? Clearly, where do they stand right now? Clearly because of the loss, they won't be number 1. They yeah. won't be number 2. They won't be number 3. I think best case scenario, they either 4 or 5. Mm -hmm. Depending on, you know, the minds of the individuals that's, that's in charge of putting these rankings out. But me personally, I have them 4 uh, or, or, or 5 in the top 5 when you look at what happened today. But you can't you know, turn your back on Alabama. I can say this much, though. We always felt like there would be a one-loss team getting to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there will be a two-loss team. So sure. if you're Alabama, I don't think you can afford to have any more losses. Now they are now playing with their backs against the wall, and I'm not sure that's an Alabama team that any of those other teams on the schedule want to see, BMAC. But as we take a look forward, uh, college football playoff thrown into the blender. As we said here, there's going to be some one-loss teams in that playoff, but we do have to finish here by tipping our cap to Texas A&M. No question. What Zach Calzon did, what that team was able to accomplish here, put the finishing touches on it for us, a final bow here on what is the win of the season across college football. Signature win for Jimbo, signature win for A&M. This is why they brought Jimbo there. This is why they're giving him over $9 million to be able to do these type of things in these situations. Nick Saban had a lock on his assistance. 24-0 mm -hmm. coming into tonight's ball game. Now he's 24-1. The coach he lost to is also a championship coach with championship pedigree. He understands the moment, and he's a guy that can put any quality championship-like performance on display given the opportunity. So if hats off, I don't have a hat on, but if I did, I tip my brim to Jimbo Fisher in the Texas A&M Aggies. And it's a historic night in college football, and it's always great to break it down with our guy Bryant McFadden. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.